Okay, I now have all of the geometry baked from Grasshopper in a way that I want it. Um, specifically these layers, uh, which are organized by RGB values. Um, I no longer need the buildings layer because all of the buildings are placed into these specific layers. But I do want to keep the blocks layer and the points layer in which I've got these circles, these walking radius, uh, circle diagrams. So I'm going to select everything here and export as Adobe Illustrator and I'm going to call this two maps to compare. And I want to preserve model scale, say 10 meters equals one millimeter. Uh, we can also export the Euclid boundary. All right. Then in Illustrator, we're going to create a new file. A3 landscape orientation units millimeters. So I've opened my Illustrator file and you can see all my layers are as I wanted them. Uh, for some reason it's pasted down here but we can just drag this up and turn on uh, rulers to make sure we're using the right size here. We're doing A3, which would be 420 millimeters by 297, which is this correct. Um, if it's not, you can go to um, Document Setup, Edit Artboards, and make sure it is uh, 420 by 297. By selecting the items on each layer um, and specifying the color that's written in that layer. So for example, select these objects. It's asking for 25, 25, 255. So double click here. 25, 255. through and do that for each. Okay, the gradient is now colored accordingly. Um, now I want to reduce the line weights uh, of these, these black outlines because it's a bit too bold at the moment. So I'm going to select all of these. Uh, holding shift and selecting all these layers. and set the stroke weight, we can keep it at black, set the stroke weight to 0.05. Okay, so now it's much less nicer and the gradient is much more obvious. Something else I might like to quickly do is to create a background image. Um, this isn't necessary, but uh, it might have something to do with my concept. Um, might help communicate the idea a bit better. Um, I'm just going to use an image uh, I found online and take it into Photoshop. I'm going to use what are called uh, actions. And which you can see if you um, go to window, show actions. And there are, uh, here's just a default action. It's just a routine of processes, which you can see here. Uh, you can also find actions online, which you can download and, and use actions that other people have recorded. You can also record your own. Um, I'm just going to click play on this action. See, it'll go through the steps. And I want 
to uh, merge these layers and control U and colorize to a more bluish hue like I had. for my gradient colors. Okay, so maybe something like that. I can save this. Um, we can also do a uh, filter. Now back in Illustrator, I want to create a new layer, um, drag it to the back, and call it background. And then I would want to place this file. Scale it up. And probably want to lower the opacity. Also want to select my blocks and give them a solid white color. Next step, I'm going to want to go back to the grasshopper definition to extract some data that I can use to create a chart or a graph um, with this infographic. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the definition. Um, again, this is the point attractors definition. And I want to find the number of buildings that are less than 100 meters from the points, the number of buildings that are 100 to 200 meters from the points, and the number of buildings that are greater than 200 meters from the points. So currently my circles are at a radius of 200 meters. And before I convert these into planar surfaces, uh, I should combine them using the region union object. So it's basically just combine these curves, these circle curves, into as few shapes as it can um, and remove the overlaps. Okay. So I can see that I now have data with two branches, this big overlapping circle and then this one which is separated. This one which contains 20 points, and this one which contains 547 points. If we change this radius to 100 instead, you can see that now we're dealing with 192 points, which are less than 100 meters from the points. OK. 
Okay. So if we then subtract from our total 192 and 130. We're left with 375 points, which are between 100 and 200 meters. Okay. So then we'll take this data into Illustrator. Uh, first, create a pie graph. Uh, you could also use column graph or any of these other kinds, but for this example, just use pie graph. And draw it here. And we'll give it a title, say, uh, meters. Again, this was 192, 375, 130. Okay. Okay, we want to move this around um, to create a new layer. Drag it to that, call that graph. And we want to give it a title. Again, let's make a new layer called text. and adjust the colors of the graph object. Using the paint bucket. From the greater than 200 meters, we can use a wider color. Just be consistent. One hundred to two hundred, something in between. And less than one hundred, we should use a darker blue. Let's continue to add titles and statistics here. Okay, I now have all of the information on the page that I need, and I'm just going to clean it up and make it read a bit better. Um, first, I want to go ahead and lock all of these layers so they don't move around. Going to readjust the text. Just the font.
Alt and Shift to copy. Then we want to recenter the in our pie chart here. And change these outlines. Shape tool. Let's draw a circle over top of this. Put that on a graph layer as well and make it gradient. and export. 